Hello, so in this video, we are going to be creating a pie chart using Deneb. Now, I know what you're going to say, I don't like pie charts, etc, etc. Opinions on pie charts, doesn't matter. If you use them correctly, they are good visualizations. That's it. And this one is particularly cool. It was first posted, uh, or the first time I saw it, it was on this blog by the Flilaga twins. I hope I'm pronouncing their name correctly. I apologize if I'm not. Um, and they said that this is a great pie chart design, looks really cool, and I totally agree. It was first created um, by Muhammad Azar, and he, you can see now, does look really cool. And essentially what it is, it's not a pie chart, but rather like a part pie chart, because the only thing you're actually seeing is the percentage total that is occupied. So you see here 39%, so you see just the 39 here, and the rest is empty, so like a part pie chart. That's what I want to create. Looks really cool. So let's get to it. So the value that I'm using is a percentage total. So the maximum can be 100%. So let's get going and see how it looks. So I have my den of visualization. I have my one value. You only need one value for this. And I'm going to go edit and then we get started. As ever, I am going to choose an empty visual. I'm going to click on create and we have our nice blank template here that gets started. Everything goes in between layer. So that's why I'm gonna make this big gap. So just so it's easier to look at. If you don't know what any of this is, what any of this means, then just check out my first Dena video because then it'll teach you the basics of what we're talking about here. But what we wanna do is to create essentially to, for this visualization to pie charts, really two arcs. One is going to be this red part here, and the other one is going to be the black complete circle. So just to demonstrate how this is done, I'm going to copy and paste bits in and explain them bit by bit as I copy and paste them because that's faster than typing and I can't type. So the first thing I want to do, I want to type, or in this case, copy and paste this. So in my first layer, I've opened up the layer and I said my mark so I'll say layer, and everything here is my first layer, mark, and it's gonna be type arc, because an arc is what you use if you're creating a pie chart. So if I just then close that off like that, and then say, okay, then my mark is finished, I apply that change, what it's gonna do, it's gonna give me a complete circle. That's it, because if you say mark type arc, that's what you get, you get a circle because you haven't given any context to it. We then need to say, okay, what do we want that arc to be? Where do we want it to start? Where do we want it to end? All this type of stuff. So to do that, we need a bit of context and that comes in the form of our encoding. So what I want to do is say that the, the, um, the theta, the theta is something which determines when this circle, the angle of the circle, the angle of the value where it will start and where it will end. So what I'm going to do in my encoding is say I want the theta to be controlled by a certain field. So here I've got my encoding. In the start of my encoding, I'm simply saying theta is field selected percent. That's it so far. Of course, we're going to build it a bit by bit. But once I've done that, I'm going to again apply this change and then we're going to see what happens. And what's ha going to happen is going to be nothing. That change has been applied, but why is nothing happened? Why do we still just have a complete circle? Yeah, well, if I just, if we have a look, what we can see is if I look at a tooltip, for example, tooltip true, like that. Now we can see that we have the value of 88.3, but that is my complete circle because still we're not saying where does it start or end? Because the 88.3 is just a complete circle. We have to say, what is the maximum value the circle can be? So say if our circle starts here, then all the way around, all our values, the very top part is the 88.3. But I want to say, actually, the top line needs to be 100. Why 100? Well, because this is out of 100%, so the maximum the maximum value we can have has to be 100. So I need to state that within my encoding. And I'm going to put that right in the theta. So I'm going to do two things. I'm going to say, basically, 
that first of all, that this is a quantitative value. So I've got field, I've already had that in. Now I'll add a type quantitative, yeah. And then I've said scale. Now this part, this is basically determining the maximum value of this circle, right? So if I say now scale, the domain of that scale is zero to 100. So zero is the lowest number and 100 is the highest number what that's now going to do is say that the top value of this circle is going to be 100. See, now I apply that change, you can see that this is 88.3 and this is 100. So the gap between here now, that difference is a gift difference between my 88.3 and the 100. So now, for example, if I said, the domain, the maximum would be 90, that gap would be much smaller. Why? Because our value is 88.3 and the maximum value here is 90. But of course that's not accurate because this is a percentage total and that has to be 100. And then that gives us this essentially, you know, upside down Pac-Man because that's how it should look based on this 88.3. So now, for example, if I were to go back to my report view and change it to a different value, see now we have this, this player, I have over, and now we have 48.9. As, as you can see, it's just less than 50%, and which is accurate because it's 48.9. Makes sense, right? So we've kind of achieved the first part, yeah? I do wanna add a couple of more things. First of all, I wanna change the color because I want it to be pretty much exactly how I have it here with this red. Um, and I wanna change the size a little bit just to show you how you do these things. Now, changing the color is like very basic, same as we do all the time. So I'm just gonna get rid of my tooltip now because I don't need it anymore. And I'm gonna say color, and this is my, uh, my hex code. And that could give me the color. So we have the similar color. Also wanna do, I wanna specify the size of the radius. So basically the size of the circle. So now, instead of having just type arc, I've got type arc and I've said, and I want the radius to be 105. Do that and that, that gives me that. Yeah, so I've just made the circle a little bit smaller. I'm gonna maximize on the screen now so you can see it better. So that is my main circle part. That's the value of what we're looking at. But what I want to do now, I also want to add a second mark on top of that, which is going to be my black line. That's actually really easy to do because we don't need to do stuff like give it a max or a min. We're just going to put in a black circle and that's going to sit on top of that. So to do this, I can take my mark. So this mark goes from here to there and I'm going to add a second mark on top of it. And again, it's going to be an arc. So I'm going to copy and paste this in again and then explain what the values are that I'm pasting in. So I have my mark type arc, and I have a color, the color is black, so that's pretty straightforward. However, I've got two other things. I've got my inner radius and my outer radius. Now, if you notice when we did my first circle, I simply specified a radius of 105, yeah? So that's just the size of the circle. And the second arc, I'm giving two radius, so an inner and an outer. What does that do? Let's have a look. So I apply this change, and then you can see that creates this really thin circle. Why is that? Well, for example, my outer radius is 95, which is just less than 105. So for example, if I went out 100 there, I would have this line that goes much closer to the edge. Also, the circle would be a lot thicker, because the, dish, the, the, num, the difference between my inner radius and my outer radius is much bigger. So the line is, is thicker. There, for example, if I had here an inner radius of zero, I would have a complete circle, like a pie chart, essentially. So this is really how you would create a donut. If I did that, you would, you're now creating essentially a donut chart. So this is essentially what I've done here. Uh, what I've done here is just create a very thin, quite unsatisfying to eat donut. But it looks really cool, right? Because I've got this thin line 
And that again looks really similar to what we have here. So I've created my thin line by having an inner and an outer radius. Color black, and that's it. That's all I have to do for that part. So the creation of the pie chart itself is really straightforward. So if I do here, as you can see, this black line is staying what it always is, and I'm just clicking around and that value changes. So actually to create the pie chart itself is really straightforward. You can see how little code is actually there. The hardest part really, and it's still not that hard, is to add the text mark. So let's look at how we're gonna do that. So the next thing I need to do is add my text mark, which I'm gonna do now. And I'm gonna just paste it in as usual, and then we take it from there. So I'm adding in my text mark. What I'm seeing here is my mark is type text, obviously, and my radius, I've added a radius there. We'll get back to that later as to why I've done that. Text size, font weight, we can play around with all these values and stuff just to get it just right. But this is a standard creation of a text mark. We then of course need to add our encoding, which is what I'm gonna do now. And in my encoding, I'm just gonna say that the text field should be a specific field. And the field I want it to be is of course, the only other field that we have there. I have my encoding text field selected percent. So if I apply that change, this is what I have. So that's okay. It's not great, it's okay. Why is it okay? Well, first of all, it only says 88.3. This is a percentage, so I want it to be the also say 88.3%. There's a couple of ways of doing that, and I'm gonna do it with a, a calculate because we need to calculate because if I were to say text select, uh, text field is select percentage, and then say, um, I wanna format that this way, I'm gonna format as what? Let's say one decimal place. What I've done now is I've specified that this is a percentage and that's what happens. I get 88 point, sorry, 88, 8,830% 8, because it's 88.3, not 0 0.83. And that gives us this crazy high value. Doesn't make any sense. So we can just clean that up nicely with a calculate or a transform calculate. And this is what I'm gonna do here. Inside this text mark, I'm gonna say transform. So a transform just allows us to do a data transformation. And I've covered this on previous videos. Have a look at them. But this is simply saying that transform, I wanna create a transform and I'm gonna calculate, the calculation that I want to do is datum. So my selected percent divided by 100. That's it. So look, as you can see here, selected percent divided by 100, and then I've named it underscore label. That's it. So instead of here saying my field is selected percent, I'm gonna change that, I'm gonna call it label instead. Now I have 88.3%. Because I did selected percentage divided by 100, 88.3. So sorts it out. You could do that also by having a second measure if you wanted as well, but I think that's a, not a particularly tidy way of working to have another measure it is quite a lot. So you do it this way, finished, nice. Um, yeah, going back to the radius of the text is simply because if I had it, you know, 105, it would be flush with the edge of the circle, which doesn't look good. If I didn't put a radius inside it at all, it would put a dead center of the circle, which we don't want, it doesn't look great. So I'm sticking to my 145, maybe I'll bring it in a bit closer later, but for now we'll leave it there. The only thing that I want to do differently to this visualization, where our text label is always on the left, I must admit I kind of, that's the only thing I don't like about this visual. This is just a personal thing. What I want my text mark to do is kind of follow around the, um, the value itself. So 88.3 for me should be sitting here, not like here. So for example, what we have currently, if I click on Saka, we have 48.9, and I would want this value to be here, just kind of following around as it increases, gets lower. So let's do that now. 
And to do that, it's exactly the same as what we did here in the encoding using the theta. I'm going to give my text mark also a theta. Yeah? So, copy and paste it in. After my, I've closed off my text, I'm going to say theta and selected percent. And that's where you have now, 88.3. So as it follows it around, you can see it's moving with it. The only thing I don't like is I think it's a sitting a little bit because of the value, I'm not sure, but I would prefer if it was just sitting a little bit further inside that number, not on the very edge. This is just me being a little bit picky, but it's also really easy to fix. To fix it, I'm just going to copy and paste this transform. So copy it, do a second transform. And this time I'm going to say, um, yeah, my selected percent, and I'm going to divide it by, let's say, 1.01. .01. See how that works? And then I'm going to call that offset. So now my theta, instead of field select percentage, it's going to be field offset. Apply that change. And now it just sits a little bit closer into my circle. I know it's a small thing, but I do think it makes a bit of a difference. Of course, you, you can play around with that value if you wanted. You could say, okay, 1.01 .01 isn't enough. I want to be 1.05, I don't know, just I don't know. Maybe I prefer that. But that's how you play around with that to get that value to be look a bit closer to or a bit further inside that the value area, not like sticking up here somewhere. But this is just the small stuff you can change to kind of make it look more precise based on, on what you want. And that is essentially it. I think there's not much that's missing. I know um, here you have this nice arc here, and that is also displayed on the um, the blog post um, on this website, but these ones don't have it, and I kind of prefer it without it, to be honest. Um, so that is how you create that pretty cool pie chart. Um, if you want to have opinions of telling me why I don't like pie charts, feel free to do so. I disagree because pie charts are fine when they're used correctly, like all data visualizations. Um, yeah, so what I also want to do is create another shorter video as to how you take this visual and then you do also this small multiples. So my next video will be how to take this visual and make a very small change and you can create small multiples out of it. And that's it. Hope you liked it. Let me know what you think. Comment, post, um, like it if you liked it. Post a little comment if you didn't like it or if you did like it. Tell me what you do differently. And uh, yeah, all those general YouTube type things. Hope you enjoyed it anyway. Hope you learned something. This was a great little challenge for me because I'd never really done much with, with pie charts with Denner before. So that's it. Thank you very much. Take care and goodbye.